This is the last episode of this tiny series about creating REST APIs in Node.js using TypeScript. Let's finish off by reorganizing our application so that it's a little bit easier to maintain so that we can keep this application open for future improvements and evolutions. So let's start by talking about the directory structure and this application. And contrary to the popular approach of organizing files by type, for example, models are in one directory, services are in another, another directory, controllers are in another directory, in Hunsfeld, we are organizing files by feature, which means that we group together different files related to the same feature so that they can work together. Once your application grows, you will realize that combining files by feature is just easier to maintain. So you can think about it like an extension to the approach that's applied in React or Vue.js, because in those UI libraries or frameworks, whatever you call them, you group together JavaScript, CSS, and HTML and, and template. So you group that together in order to work on the same feature. So here in Hunsfeld, it's uh, exactly the same idea, but it's extended to the other elements. So it's not only about front end, it's about front end and back end and everything in between. For now, we've been just using this routes file which is located in the config file, but that's not the idiomatic way in Hunsfeld. So let's make it a little bit more idiomatic. So we also have this features directory and here let's create another feature. So let's uh, say future event. And now we have event. We have two directories, base and event. Base is being created by default when you are initializing your application and event is what we just created. And here, let's start by creating our first file. So it will be features uh, event, and we will create repository. So a TypeScript file. So we are putting our first element, the event repository, under the features event directory. And let's grab this whole piece over here. Let's remove it and let's place it inside on this repository file. And let's export this class as default, like so. Okay, so repository is there. The next step would be to create controller. So under event, we are creating the controller. And here we will be creating a file per action. So for example, if we want to browse, we will have a file for that. If we want to fetch a single element, we will have a file for that with a function inside. So let's for a moment go back to the theory. And as you remember, we had this acronym CRUD, create, read, update, and destroy. So in Hunsfoot, I wanted to simplify a little bit this part, and we are replacing the error letter reading with two other letters, with B and F. And why is that? Because reading in RESTful API is either about reading a collection or reading a sing single element. So if you're reading a single element, it's easy. You're just uh, fetching or getting this element. And because get is a restricted keyword in JavaScript, I decided to use uh, the word fetch. And browsing is slightly more complicated because it's not only about fetching a collection but it's also about applying criteria so for example you may be interested in all uh, resources or elements in your collection but you may also want to filter it out to provide some criteria and then get a shorter collection based on that so for that reason i wanted to separate those two things querying by applying criteria, your collection, and fetching or getting a single element. We are just splitting this error, which in CRUD is about those two things at the same time, about reading a collection and reading a single element. We are splitting it into two just to make it a little bit simpler in our heads. So that's enough for uh, the theory part. 
and let's apply this. So I will be now creating some features event controller in this directory. I will create our first action, which is uh, let's start by create. Let's go back to the routes and let's let's get this part over here, which is responsible for creating an element. And let's place it here. I will name it create. I will remove this path like that. I will import even repository from repository like that. And I will say that this is a handler. This function is of type handler. Okay, the first one is done. Let's take another one. So our acronym is CBFood. So the next one is B, which is browse. So let's create browse. And browse is this part over here. Again, I will do the same thing. I will remove the path. I will name this function browse. This is a handler. And we need to export it as well, like so. And the same for create like that. So we have two. So now CB food, so F, which is fetching a single element. So let's take this part over here and this will be fetch. I'm removing the path. Again, this is handler. You know the drill. This, this, and let's export it like that. Okay, so we have three. CB food, so next letter is U, which is update. The update is this part over here. And let's put it here like that. And finally, let's do destroy. And we have only this part left. So let's put it here. Okay, so we have it done. Now this route is empty. So let's try and run it. I will open the terminal over here and I will just type Hunsfoot server and let's see what happens. So it started. I will open another window and let's try to query. And it works. But as you remember, I removed the paths. So those functions don't have paths anymore. So it seems there is some kind of magic here. Queensfoot is doing something behind the scenes to simplify this whole process because creating those resources and creating those actions when doing a RESTful API is so common that this tool makes it out of the box. Creating RESTful APIs is kind of repetitive because you need to create a resource and then you need to implement one of those five methods. That's the um, standardized approach. And because it's so standardized, Hunsfoot takes advantage of that fact and tries to help you out so that you can write a little bit less code and, it, and it's also organized in a way that's slightly easier to understand. It may seem magic, but in fact, it's just uh, exploiting this standardization so that you can focus on fulfilling the business needs of your application instead of, you know, configuring, constantly configuring and, and reorganizing the structure. Try it out, see how it works for you. There are some edge cases uh, that um, but there are also some solutions to that. I hope you'll like it. So if you are naming your functions, like I, I named them, which is create, browse, fetch, update, and destroy CB food, then Hunsfot, based on the location and the repository tree, will infer how to apply this. And then you can just simply create those functions and use your API straight away. Browsing works, getting a single element works, Let's try creating a new one. So it seems it works as well. So everything works. We slightly reduced our code. And now if you want to create the endpoints for another resource, you can just create the proper directory with the controller inside and implement all five or less or just one action of your choice. And then you can use it, this uh, resource uh, right away. But this is still far from a production ready API because there is so many stuff which is missing. We don't have any persistence layer, such as database or files. We are not doing any validations, which is especially important for when your API receives data, which is through posting. The create action is responsible for that. So you are receiving some parameters, name and location of your event. You should verify if those, this data is the way you want it. So you should apply some validation here. But all that goes a little bit beyond this tiny tutorial. 
because we just wanted to create an API with uh, one resource. But if you're interested, let me know. We will slowly improve that and we will add the database connection validations, even authentication if you would like to see that. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video.